Katie, and I'm very excited to show you our new greenhouse. It's actually been ours for about six months now, but I have yet to take a video in the greenhouse because it's been winter. I have posted a couple of photos on social media and have been getting lots of questions. Things like, what brand greenhouse is that? Was it expensive? Was it hard to put together? What are you growing in it? Is it does it get hot in there? Um, so I'm putting together this video. It'll be a little tour of the greenhouse and what we're growing in here right now, what we plan to grow in here, and hopefully answer some of the questions that I've been getting. First, a bit of background. My husband and I started watching Gardener's World about three or four years ago and immediately wanted a greenhouse. If you haven't seen it, Gardener's World is an excellent British gardening show that stars Monty Don. You need a streaming subscription to the BBC to watch it live, but older seasons are on YouTube, so that's how our dream to own a greenhouse got started. A year and a half or so ago, we got serious and started researching different options. We wanted something that would be durable and aesthetically pleasing to go with our 120-year-old Victorian farmhouse. I did lots of research, looked at reviews, got price lists, etc. While we would have loved to own a Hartley Botanic or Alatex Victorian greenhouse, we didn't have tens of thousands of dollars to spend, so sadly those were not an option. We ended up settling on a Janssen's greenhouse, which is a Belgian company. They're imported by a company called Exco Trading in Austin, Texas, and sold through several greenhouse suppliers and big box stores in the U.S. They get great reviews and are more affordable, more in the five to $7,000 range, while still giving the Victorian glass greenhouse look. We were ready to pull the trigger on a Janssen's greenhouse last spring, and then the pandemic happened. We weren't comfortable making such a large purchase with so much uncertainty, so we decided to wait. By the time we circled back in the summertime, we were shocked to find out that greenhouses had become a pandemic purchase item and were nearly impossible to get. We were so lucky to find this one still available at Sam's Club. So here it is, our Janssen's Junior Orangerie Greenhouse. It's T-shaped and the overall dimensions are 10 by 13. We built it on an existing brick patio next to our kitchen garden. The door faces the garden and slides open. On the front, there are two windows that open automatically. The hinges have a substance in them that expands and contracts depending on the temperature, so they open the windows automatically when it gets hot inside. This can be adjusted, but we have them set to open when it's around 70 degrees inside. Our version of the greenhouse has tempered glass panels. They do offer polycarbonate as well. We went with the glass for looks. Polycarbonate has the advantage of being slightly opaque to help soften direct sunlight. The inside of the greenhouse is 116 square feet. Our greenhouse didn't come with any of the extras like the seed tray, so we kind of had a clean slate when it came to what to put on the inside. My husband built me this beautiful cedar potting bench with shelves on top. It was custom built for this spot, so it fits perfectly. And then we decided to install gutters, two sets of gutters on one side to use as planting boxes. We got them at Home Depot. They were 10 foot long black gutter sections and they're whatever the bigger size is. I wanna say seven inches, but I'm not positive about that. They work pretty well. They fit quite a bit of soil and we use the channel system on the greenhouse with nuts and bolts and an L bracket to hold them up so they're pretty sturdy. We also have our grow bags in here that can be moved around along with some of our outdoor planters that we moved in for the winter. We're still figuring out a shelving situation for all of the seed trays that we're going to have in here starting in a couple weeks. Right now I'm just using this old mini greenhouse that I purchased at Ocean State Job Lot. And it does help keep humidity in and keep the seedlings a little bit warmer at night. Um, but I'd like to have more shelving. Something maybe a little more durable. We live in Rhode Island, USA, which is zone 6B, and it gets down to negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit here in the winters. Um, and we've had the greenhouse so far through one fall and one winter. And we've noticed that it's been consistently about 20 to 30 degrees warmer inside the greenhouse versus the outdoor temp on sunny days, even in the winter. It's an unseasonably warm day in March today. 
Well, it's probably in the high 50s outside right now. The sun is starting to go down because it's afternoon. Um, and I have the door and the windows open in the greenhouse and it's still 70 degrees in here. So it does get quite warm, especially when it's sunny out. However, the temps do drop close to the outdoor temp at nighttime. So depending on what you plan to grow in the greenhouse, you might need to add supplemental heating. There are lots of ways of insulating and heating the greenhouse that we have not tried yet. You can insulate the walls with bubble wrap or pool covers. You can put in a geothermal system that pulls heat from underground. You can make, make heat sinks out of black water barrels. You can even put your compost heap inside the greenhouse to generate heat. All we've really done so far is put in a small greenhouse heater on a thermostat to help on the cold nights. We purchased our greenhouse heater from Gardner's Supply Company and this is the Bio Green Palma. I think it might be the only option they offer at Gardner Supply Company. It works really well. It's a small heater. I've got it up on bricks because we do get um, water in here sometimes when it rains really hard. And it's hooked up to this thermostat um, so you just set it to a specific temperature and it'll go on once it reaches that temperature. It also can be used to cool the greenhouse in the summer um, as a fan. An unheated greenhouse bake basically gives you one zone improvement. So we're in zone 6B and having this greenhouse, if we don't heat it, will allow us to plant things that would survive the winter in zone 7B. Without any supplemental heat, we can grow hardy greens like kales, cabbage, or flowers like pansies and hellebores. I read Elliot Coleman's Winter Harvest Handbook, and he introduced me to a few different greens that I'd never heard of, like this one, which is called Claytonia, and another one down here at the end called Mache. Hopefully I'm pronouncing those right. And both of these greens can grow in sub-freezing temperatures. And they're actually both pretty good. I'm kind of sensitive to bitter greens, but these ones are nice and mild and nutty. And they've been kind of a cool addition to salads over the winter. And then if we want to put in another layer of cover inside the greenhouse, like if we were to put a cold frame in here, or if we cover things in frost fabric, that gives us an additional zone improvement so we could plant things that would survive over the winter in zone 8B. Throughout the winter, I had the heater set to 28 degrees Fahrenheit to protect from a deep freeze overnight. And everything we had in here survived, including lettuces, spinach, kale, pansies, etc. Our only issue growing so far has been a little bit of an aphid infestation, especially on the spinach. I do think I have it under control now with a couple applications of insecticidal soap, but it's definitely a little different growing in a greenhouse because we don't have beneficial insects to help take care of these issues for us, and it's been a bit of a learning curve. Spring will be the most used time in the greenhouse as I am starting lots of flowers and vegetables from seed. So right now I have the heater turned up to 40 degrees because we still have some cold nights. It is getting really hot in here during the day, so I usually come out and open the door and the windows open automatically. I anticipate it being really hot in here during the summer, so we'll be using the heater as a fan, and we'll also be installing the shade cloth to keep the temps down. And we'll only really be growing heat-loving plants inside the greenhouse, like peppers, over the summer. We absolutely love our greenhouse and have nothing but good things to say about both Janssen's and Exico. Although I will say that building it was quite a project. It arrived in three large boxes and a very large crate that wouldn't fit in our garage. We stored it outside for a couple weeks while we were waiting to build the greenhouse and had to put a tarp over it to keep it from getting wet. Then in mid-September we sent our two-year-old son to his grandparents for the weekend and started building the greenhouse. We were trying to get it done as fast as possible so I didn't take any video. It ended up taking my husband and I three full days to put it together, plus another half day where my father-in-law helped my husband install the windows and door. It definitely would have been easier with a third person, especially for the roof raising part. And the complexity of the T-shaped design definitely added to the assembly time as well. 
It was sort of like putting together a piece of IKEA furniture, but much higher quality. The metal framing pieces all fit together with a channel system and nuts and bolts, so there is minimal cutting and drilling involved. Exico sends extensive instructions and a video tutorial, which is very helpful to watch before building. They also have a number to call if you get stuck, which we used once. They answered right away, offered to FaceTime, and helped us with our question about attaching the greenhouse to our brick patio. The first step in building a greenhouse is to figure out what you're going to use as the foundation. And that can be a big added cost, depending on what you have available to you. We were lucky that we had this existing brick patio that was already leveled and already had a small retaining wall built around it. And it was in the exact spot where we wanted to build the greenhouse. So we decided to just build on top of this. I do like the brick. I think it looks nice. It also drains water pretty well. And it does keep and retain some warmth better than some other materials might. One of the challenges with building on an existing patio was figuring out a way to anchor the greenhouse to the patio. We ended up pulling a couple bricks so we could at least sink a couple anchors down in the corners and keep the greenhouse from moving laterally when it's very windy. And so far the greenhouse has had no issues with wind and we made it through a particularly snowy northeast winter. I did clean snow off the roof a couple of times with a roof rake. So yeah, we're very happy to have our greenhouse built. We're excited to use it during spring seed starting this year. We still have a lot to learn, but it's been really fun so far. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks.